is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Friday, Acura Pembroke Pines celebrating their 14th year and 12 years in a row now, the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. you got to check out the 2023 Integra. It's in, it's sharp, it's beautiful, and tell them that Big O sent you at 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I-75 in Pines. Good morning, Ira Winderman. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, Big O. I'm getting ready for Udonis Haslam's. Uh, for those who are watching us on YouTube on the Big O Show and Acura Pembroke Pines Report, I'll put this in air air quotes. Udonis Haslam's big announcement coming up on Sunday. I will say this. Udonis is as reliable as an Acura. He will give you great mileage over the years. He has great <laughs> residual value. All of that put together. But Big O, I can't see. You know, we get this press release, and, and you go along with it. You get a gazillion press releases. Udonis Haslam will announce his next career plan Sunday at his youth basketball camp, basketball camp at Miami High. There is zero chance if a 19-year career is coming to an end, it's going to be done anything less than a major formal FTX arena announcement with Pat Riley, maybe with every coach who's coached Udonis and Stan Van Gundy and everyone over the years, not while he's sweating after coaching youths in a basketball and cheerleading camp. So God bless Udonis. He's coming back for a 20th season. We'll know that on Sunday. We'll talk about that on Monday. So when you're out there on the lot at Acura Pembroke Pines, whether you're looking for a used or a new car, just keep in mind, reliability is the watchword here on the Acura Pembroke Pines Report and Big O Show. And that's my cross promotion for the morning. I now hand the reins over to Orlando Alzagari. Well, it's actually cool that he's having a camp at, at uh, Miami High. I don't know if you know this, but... There's a movie coming out now about the asylum and Miami High. Uh, did you hear about this? I, I, I did not, but um, you know what? Any anything regarding Miami High and just following Udonis's career, I'm all in for. Well, um, I'm looking for the uh, the tweet from the uh, gentleman because I'm actually going to have him on uh, the director of it. But I think it's actually a cool thing because I don't think a lot of people realize that Miami High is kind of like the Boston Celtics of high school basketball. One, the gym is probably the most historic gym that there is in Florida. When you walk in, it's... Have you ever been to the Miami High gym? I have been there. The Heat have had events there, yes. Yeah, it's one of those old-style 50s, 60s gyms that had the second-level balcony and all that. And it, and it's also a field house type because it has the stained glass with the with the light coming in. And then... You look up and the amount of banners that are hanging there, it reminds you of the Celtics because of all the championships that they've won. And and so somebody now actually is going to uh, do a has done a movie. It, I think it previews on the 20th of this month. And uh, it's all about what 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 that, that gym was called, the asylum, because the second you walked into that gym, they had the advantage back in the days of uh and, 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 and what Martin. coach are we talking about give me the two the name Schaefer shaky frank martin how about yeah. that baby yeah how I about mean, that from shaky rodriguez and what he yeah, did yeah, yeah but nobody mentions Schaefer, baby right. nobody mentions Schaefer. okay you know what it's always I, the one that's i'm old enough to know Schaefer. Yeah. in fact i'm old enough to know the story that Schaefer gave shaky and not kaufman the nod as the head coach kaufman then went to South Miami or Killian, Killian. And he was a bitter human being for a long, long time because he didn't get to take over the Miami High program and Shakey did. And, and so, I mean, you, you talk about a stepping stone to greatness out of that program, you know, yeah. and, and Shakey, and at least he got his chance to move up. And obviously, Frank Martin, we know about what he's done. So when you just look at that program in UD, it's a great setting for him to announce season number 20. I, you know what I like about this whole UD thing, the way it's played out, is I think there might have been some bitterness if it happened right away where you said, well, what about player X? What about player Y? Why is he taking this roster spot? Now as you see the NBA free agency list sort of settle down, it really comes down to either you're bringing back Markeith Morris or you're bringing back Udonis Haslam. You're going to play smaller. You're going to give the minutes to Caleb Martin anyway. You're going to give Jimmy – matter of fact, the real question this season, Big O, is – Will Jimmy Butler be the Heat's finishing power forward at closing time? And I believe the answer will be yes. So everyone sort of exhale a little bit. The Heat will be fine at that position. They never have, 
And under Eric Spolstra, they likely never will play traditional lineups anyway. Eric Spolstra will find a way because he has found a way ever since he took over in 2008. All right. The Asylum Miami High Hoops directed by uh, Mr. Gutierrez. The film will premiere on the 20th of this month at Gable's Cinema. Uh, they'll have multiple additional screenings to be announced on the 23rd of this month. You can actually follow the folks at Audible Sports on Twitter and uh, and Jay Gutierrez FIBA uh, also on Twitter. He is the director of of the Asylum. Jay Gutierrez FIBA is the uh, Twitter handle, and uh, we look forward to having him on next week to talk a little bit about uh, the Asylum. So I'm looking forward to that. That's actually pretty cool, and I I, I had the pleasure of being in the locker rooms at times with Frank Martin, because obviously I've gotten to know Frank over the years. And, and so I was doing, uh, I was doing Spanish radio and wins back in those days working with Eddie K. And, um, and so, uh, I would go down to the Miami high games and Frank would let me go into the locker rooms at, at times at halftime. And I just, you know, stand back and just listen to him roar <laughs> you know, at halftime. And so I got to see those Udonis Haslam teams when he was a kid and all that. And that was a, that was a lot of fun back in those days. That was a, that was a great experience. I thought high school basketball in those days was a lot of fun. I don't Nowadays, I don't know. Obviously, I'm so old now that I'm, I'm not. Well, well, you know, insane. to talk to an old fart like you, what's changed is the whole AAU scene. That's pretty much usurped oh, okay. high school basketball. That. For a lot of these kids, it's we can't wait till the high school season's over so we can get to our real team. So right. we can tour all summer. So we can go to Vegas and the big tournaments and the Nike right. tournaments around the country. So it's sort of taken over. You know, I mean, what was it? This week we saw a story about, you know, the, the image and licensing for some second graders who are the top of their class and, the, and their dad already wants to get them contracts. So it's a different world. Let's not be old men and get off my lawn, but let's appreciate what they did at, at Miami senior and those years, especially with shaky and especially Frank Martin. All right. So let, what do you uh, decipher from this two year monster deal that LeBron signed with the Lakers? Well, it's interesting. When I spoke to Kurt Heelan on a red recovered.com inside the paint show on Wednesday, you know, like he said, it was expected. LeBron gets what LeBron wants. He will still turn the screws for the Lakers. It's really interesting, big O and, and we can relate this to the heat. Um, a lot of people are, well, if the Heat trade away Bam or Tyler, they're ruining their future. You, you've advocated for months with me. The one thing you liked about the Heat is it's a bridge to the future. No matter what happens now, you might have Tyler, you'll have Bam, you have young players you can grow with. That's nice. What the Lakers are saying is sort of where the Heat are right now. Screw the future. We're going to live in the moment because life is about the moment sometimes. Yeah, well, so the Heat, as you've spoken to me, you have a 36-year-old Kyle Lowry. You have a 30. Three, 32, 33 year old uh, Jimmy Butler. You have uh, Victor Oladipo now in his 30s. And the Heat are talking about getting older players, Kevin Durant, who's 34. And there's something to be said for that. What LeBron did with his extension is stop talking to me about all your cap space. We're going to win now. I'm going to be here. We're going to trade our two future first round picks that we can. I don't give a rat's ass if they're not protected in 2026 and 2028. I won't be playing then. I want to win now. And so I think that the Lakers are going to become a win-now team where, hey, two, three years from now, they might be right back in the dumps where they were before LeBron, but they're going to seize the moment. It's very much of a carpe diem kind of moment for LeBron. And you know what? Greatness deserves to be rewarded. Just like Dwayne Wade at the end of his career, players like that, when you get a player like that, even Kevin Durant to a degree, I understand where KD is coming from. I can't get involved in soap operas. I'm 34 years old. I can't wait to see if Kyrie wants to play or Kyrie doesn't want to play. I have to decide right now what I want to do. So I think when you look at this situation with the Lakers, it almost mirrors the Heat. That's why LeBron liked the Heat. The Heat were never looking forward. You can talk to me all you want about Mike Miller and luxury tax, but they gave him Battier. They gave him Birdman. They gave him Ray Allen. They gave yeah. him win-now talent. They didn't worry about the ages. That's happening with the Lakers right now. To me, it comes down to... Can Anthony Davis stay healthy? Can he retain his greatness? It's interesting. There were times you and me, Big O, could talk about AD as one of the 10 best players in the league. Easily. And there were Easily. other times I could talk to you, and you would go to me, who? Oh, oh yeah, that guy plays every now and then. Yeah, he's, he's a top 10 talent, but he is not a top 10 player because his availability is yes. rare. And that's why 
we don't put him in the top 10 because you know he's not reliable and he's not durable. And that's and nobody ever denies the, the, the God given ability. My Lord. I mean, it's yeah. there, but there's something with his body that just doesn't hold up. Now, you talk about, you know, dramas and you, know, you don't have time for the clown show and all that stuff. Well, how, where does the Kyrie Irving thing stand after this contract signing? Do Can they even entertain that? Will they even entertain that? They have to. And, and as Kurt Heelan pointed out in their redrecover.com inside the paint show on Wednesday, the Lakers don't have cap space. And that's what LeBron realized. It's not that we're going to have enough for a max player. A max player these days makes $39 million. It's otherworldly. Hard to do that with LeBron and Anthony Davis under contract. But if you trade for a Kyrie Irving right now, you get his bird rights. People familiar with our actor Pembroke Pines reports know then you can pay him an unlimited amount. The Lakers have to trade for a star this season because they then have to be able to have the ability to be able to pay him bird rights going forward, which is why, again, you're hearing Buddy Heald. You're hearing some Miles Turner. They have to make a deal. So it's really interesting how toxic is Russell Westbrook. Could a team actually trade for Westbrook this year and expect him to contribute? Or has that ship sailed with his attitude? That's why the Lakers have to sweeten it with two picks. And let's face it, Big O, let's go back to what I just told you. The Lakers are all in for the moment. So this season, 22-23, then LeBron's two seasons, 23-24, that season, 24-25. Well, after that, they could be absolute garbage. So if they trade those first round picks in the future, after those years unprotected, that could be some really good lottery capital that you could wind up with. So it's a matter of how much are the Lakers going to mortgage their future. I think that's sort of interesting the way that might play out. Well, how how much ammo do they have left for, for trading? How many first rounders can they trade? They have right now two first round picks, either 26, 28 or 27, 29. Again, they're going to be awful there. So you could say those are two potential number one picks if they don't protect them. That's what teams want because Russell Westbrook's contract is so toxic. He, I, I think I'd say Big O, 90% of the teams who might trade for him will immediately waive him and just let him go into the ether. Right. It's not worth having an unhappy guy in a place he doesn't want to be. And I don't think there are many places Russell Westbrook wants to be, honestly, other than the Lakers. Maybe he'll go back to the Clippers then and take a minimum deal and try to salvage alongside another salvage story in John Wall. But that's the problem. So the Lakers either have to go all in with those draft picks and absolutely sell their future down the toilet. And the great story is the Lakers became great because back in the day of Showtime, they got all their first round picks from Ted Steppe and the Cavaliers owner, when all of a sudden James Worthy was there from a pick the Cavaliers traded the Lakers. So it's a matter of how much do you risk, but you know what? The Lakers are living in the moment. People forget they won the 2020 title. They were champions three seasons ago. They want to maximize their LeBron value. <sighs> that the whole thing about they were champions three seasons ago, you know, that's just I feel like cutting my liver out and just putting it on the table and just slicing it apart. It's just like you know what? It, you make, you make his deals. last two titles, a suspension from the from the from the Warriors kind of gave him the break there, and then now the injuries to the Heat opened the door for that one. It's just those. Those last two titles are just kind of, you know, I don't know, right place, right time type I, of thing. I, I, I get all that. But you know? when you make a deal with LeBron James, and I don't mean this negatively, you sort of make a deal with the devil that you must live in the moment and sacrifice no, everything and everything. I, 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 I totally get that. I just, when you tell me he was, they were champions three years ago, it just bothers me because it's like, they, they, they got a break on that damn finals because he took them to six even injured. I, I just without Dragic, without Bam Adebayo at the end there, yeah. God, I wish they were healthy and it, it's just you know it's it's like why did Shaq have to get the 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 thigh and then yes, and, then, and then and then two thousand five right was it rib uh, uh, Wade and him Wade thigh was it rib or, or something like that thigh, him rib yes and Shaq know. was injured twenty twenty five Eastern Conference Finals against the Detroit Pistons stuff like that happens oh, that was it's, a tight that was a tight but yeah that that's what makes the Lakers interesting that's ah. why we're all waiting to see will the Heat live in the moment will they live in the ah. Durant moment. Or will they protect Hero and protect Bam? And I like before, after our Acura Pembroke Pines report on Monday, spoke to Tyler Hero Tuesday. We spoke about it a little Wednesday here in the Big O Show. I like Tyler's attitude. I'm getting ready for a season. 
Don't know if my season will be in Miami. Don't know if my season will be elsewhere, but I'm going to be ready. That kid has become a pro's pro after three years. All this talk and worry about the off the court. Does he think, does he have too many endorsements? Is his head too big? That kid's turned into a good worker. That might be another case where the heat culture has rubbed off on a player, whether it's here or whether he takes that culture elsewhere. Tell you, man, I, I, it, it's that that Heat Lakers uh, series bothers me. Get over like, it, <laughs> like Kane's Penn State. No, I won't get over it. No, 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 no. I, 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 I haven't gotten over Kane's Penn State. Kane's Penn State or Kane's Ohio State? Which one do you go in there? No, no, that one's yeah, that one's bad too because it was the damn referee. Oh, yeah, that yeah. One. But the other one was like Jimmy Johnson, dude. Just hand it off to Alonzo, bro. Just keep handing it. Do not allow Vinny to keep passing the ball. Didn't you see the four interceptions against Tennessee in the Sugar Bowl the year before? What are you trying to do? Break records? Oh, you are five. Okay, great. Yeah, nice. You know, it, Alonzo Highsmith is getting six yards of carry. No, I will not let that go. I can't let it go. I can't let go Cleveland Gary over the damn end zone. I can't let it go. I will not let go Heat Lakers. It's, Fair enough. It'll be stuck with me forever. It's one of those games that's just going to be in my craw forever because what should have been. Same thing as uh, Shaq and Wade injured. What should have been? Damn it. Damn it, Ivra. Why does it have to happen here like this? So now it's been a pretty good three-year run. NBA Finals three years ago, Eastern Conference Finals, the one game of the final last year. You look I, at our other teams, Canes, Dolphins, Panthers, appreciate how far they've gotten. Don't lament what went wrong. All right, so what, what do you put on right now? If your gut, you have to put on a percentage of, a, of Durant or Donovan Mitchell. Where's that percentage now? After a couple months, and now we're... We're on the brink of turning the corner to get to a training camp soon. I've always felt that he'd had the better chance for Kevin Durant because I think the Heat were more inclined to go big in that direction. I think their thought has been, yes, Donovan Mitchell's a nice player. We like him a lot. But Tyler Hero's nothing to shrug your shoulders at. He's already ha here. We could make that work, maybe save him for another trade. Durant's really interesting. I mean, Durant hasn't turned all the screws. You know, people think he's, he's, he's already gone in. He's demanded that the coach and the GM are gone. There's another month of Kevin Durant drama. No one controls the Twitterverse better than Kevin Durant, whether it's his main account or his burner account. So I think if he wants to get out, he can force a hand a little bit more. And how uncomfortable, you know, Eric Spolster always talks about, there's nothing wrong with being uncomfortable. On the court, that's true. Off the court, that's not. I, I, I forgot who tweeted this today, so I apologize. But what if Kevin Durant comes out in support of of Taiwan or Hong Kong when he has Joe Tsai, the Chinese owner there in Brooklyn. Can he then keep the guy? Does it take it too far? Does he make it political? There's a lot of angles still to be played here, Big O, and there's a lot of time. Again, what are we, August 19th? We're still a month and a week away from the start of training camp. This thing will get uglier before training camps begin. That's my thought. All right. Did you see what happened to him already on the, on the hard knocks? On hard knocks, I did not know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kevin Durant was part of Hard, hard Knocks. Let me uh, let me bring it up for you. So uh, the wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown's father, was there with the kid, right? And he's, you know, working out. And so the, the son goes to him, the, the father goes to the son, you got to train your whole body. Kevin Durant and these guys mess up their Achilles. I have questions for guys like Kevin Durant. When was the last time you did calf raises? And then, and then the, the, the whole clip was put on social media, right, with the old man picking on the kid, and Kevin Durant retweets it and puts, today. <laughs> he, he's the best. He's the best, but Big O, you know what, Big O, you know, because you, you have a gazillion Twitter followers, you know, and especially over the years, to take the time to find all this stuff, even with the staff, the staff that you and I don't have, it is amazing how in tune to social media Kevin Durant is and how how he lets it get to him. Even you, uh, Come on, you and I both see some of the stuff mentioned in our Twitter accounts and how we try to stay away from it. Kevin Durant misses nothing. No, no, no. No, he's got a comment on everything. He does have – and by the way, can I defend Kevin Durant here yeah. on this one? You know, I've covered athletes all over the place, and you have too. We know athletes that, Lord, they work on their lower body. 
But brother, they their their calves just don't respond. It's one of those things that they try and they try and they try and the, and it just doesn't respond. There have been athletes in the past that I've covered that you 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 talk to them like, man, your 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 legs are a little skinny. He goes, man, I, I try as much as I can and I cannot get it, you know, to go. And it, and I think Kevin might be one of those dudes that that's just genetically who he is. And it's harder for him to build up those calves. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of like a thoroughbred. That the thoroughbreds are, you know, all the way down and kind of, uh, kind of very fragile to towards the bottom. But if he sprains the Achilles again, we won't shoot him. So don't make the exact comparisons to that. He'll be fine. He works hard. That Achilles yeah. again. He pushed himself too hard in those finals. He had the knee That's injury. Right. He pushed himself. That wasn't out of not doing something. That was overdoing something. By the way, he was at risk this year. If you watched him by the end of those playoffs or by the end of their run, he was worn out. He was out of gas. And, that, and that's why this is one that happening. The whole season. Dude. And that's why this is happening because if you can't rely on Kyrie again, it's going to be the same story. And look, if you can't rely on Kyrie, who's you relying on? Ben Simmons? Yeah, you know well, you can't rely on that already. Yeah, I mean, Ben Simmons has been in our milk cartons for the last year. You know, right. so and that's why I think his head is just give me people who show up. Jimmy shows up. He shows up at the moments of truth. Kyle Lowry, yes, he had the injury last year, but his history is he shows up at moments of truth. Bam shows up. He tried to push himself through those finals when Myers Leonard had to start a couple of games. He pushes himself. That's all he wants. He wants to go into camp with guys who said, I am riding with my guys, but those guys better be riding with me. Yeah. By the way, Troy Drayton, anybody ever catch Troy Drayton out in the street? Go look at his calves. Big dude, and it, and it goes like this all the way down his calves, and he worked out his legs, and he tried and tried and tried, and it was something he used to laugh about it. He used to laugh about it in the in the locker room with us. It's like, man, I try, and this is what I got, man. This is all I can do. Exactly. He would laugh about it, and it's just one of those things. All right, what are you working on the Sun Sentinel, my friend, so folks can check you out? A couple of things. Um, I, 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 I'm working on a piece uh, talking about the NBA scheduling. I mentioned this to Kurt Heel on Wednesday. I don't like the fact that the Heat six times this season played the same team at consecutive games because if a player is injured, a Trey Young, a Giannis Antetokounmpo, or Bradley Beal, they likely miss both games. You don't see them at all. It's not like baseball where the Pirates will be back in town later in the season or if someone you want to see is not available in one series, he comes back. So I think on one hand, I'm fine with the NBA reducing travel if the players play. But if they're going to pull that load management crap again, and we still don't get to see them in more than one trip in, then I think the league overplayed his hand. So I did a Sunday column on that, ranked the Heat strength for schedule, did speak to the NBA about the Heat not having a Christmas game. They said the fact the Dolphins are home did come into it, but it was only one factor. And then you know these leagues, Big O, they always have a stat. And so the league sent me a note back. I have it on my Sunday notes. I'm finishing today for Sun Sentinel and SunSentinel.com. And they said in the last 10 years, 10 conference finalists have not been on in Christmas. So this is not just the heat. This has happened over the years. You knew they'd have a number to justify it. Personally, I think it's hard to have a home football game and get fans in your building. They didn't want to have an empty look. I understand that. The NFL is king. The NBA will have its worst Christmas ratings ever this year. The worst thing that happened to the NBA this year is Christmas coming on a Sunday. Bah humbug. They'll have to deal with it. So let football be king that night. So I'm going to write about that. And I have a, I have my ask IRA at sunsentinel.com right now. I did ask the Heat and talk to them. I can't stand one fact about the Heat schedule more than any other. 35 times when the Heat play this year, the Florida Panthers play the same day. And I wish they could work it out. And I called the Heat, and they said they have no input in the cross-matching there, is that, that, that they play in separate arenas. Orlando, I think there's 12 arenas around the country, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, Boston, Toronto, Denver, Dallas, where they have to be able to make them mesh because it's the same building. So when the two teams in town don't play in the same building, you wind up with that. The worst part of it, of the Panthers' 41 home games and the Heat 41 home games, 10 are exactly at the same time. A quarter of the schedule. You can't be season ticket holders to both. In New York and right. Washington and Philadelphia and Boston, you can because they're never going to play at home at the same time. So you have oh, the difference. Yeah. So I understand the Heat have to fill their building. They run the building. I understand the Panthers have to fill their building. They run Flor you know, FLA Live Arena also. But it's just a goddamn shame that yeah. 35 times this year these teams will play on the same date because they're both going to be fascinating this year. So we will have to make choices or have to enjoy the second screen experience.
Yeah, it's funny because before you came on, we were talking about because we have a second channel, uh, Big O Show Radio Cuts, and we got to get that one to a thousand also uh, for subscribers so we can have live uh, broadcasting from there also anywhere we want. And and I and why? Because this upcoming season, we're going to be at Heat Games and we're also going to be at Panther Games. And because at times he may be at a Panther game and I may be at the Heat game and we may have to do live stuff at the same time. Well, we need the two channels now. Hell, I, I talked to your good former friends over there at uh, 560, and they still plan to be the flagship of the Heat and the flagship of the Panthers with 35 overlaps. Obviously, they'll move some games to 790, but when the Canes or the Dolphins are on 560 and the Heat moves to 790, I think there's a chance the Panthers could wind up on the Big O show. So, so bone up on your hockey skills, and I'm getting ready for you and Billy and Lindsay to go to work together. That is that is beautiful, but that's it, it shows you. I mean, so that's why we were preparing another channel because of the stuff that we may have to expand to. That's a, it's a crazy world, man. It is a crazy world, and it's sad that we're going to have that many conflicts, especially with the new addition to the Panthers, uh, which they fi- they finally got themselves a Jimmy Butler in, in the in the locker room, and and exactly. um, I'm. I'm excited for that, man, that they actually have a Jimmy Butler in that locker room. All right, follow him on Twitter at Ira Heatbeat. Subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Catch him three times a week here, of course, twice with the accurate Pembroke Pines Miami Heat Report and, of course, on Wednesdays. The Red Recover Inside the Paint Show with Ira and Kurt Heelan from 9 to 10 a.m. when we don't have training camp. Ira, as always, thank you, my friend. Have a great weekend. I'll be back Monday with our Acura Pembroke Pines and Udonis Haslam Miami Heat Report. Thank you, Big O. Thank you, sir. There you go. Ira Winderman. I love it. This is the Big O Show. This is the